Hello, everyone, and welcome to No Butts About It. I am your host, Josh Butts, here in my dining room in Indiana. Just is in his basement in Pittsburgh. We have football to talk about today, right after I play this awesome intro clip. All righty, everyone. Like I said, I am Josh Butts. And before we get started here talking about um, the Bengals and the Steelers and all, all those teams we love to talk about, there are some storylines we are following around the NFL, and I just wanted to let you know that we are following them. Um, so first of all, Hassan Reddick requested a trade from the New York Jets yesterday. Uh, he has not played a single snap for the team after being traded there this offseason from the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, he is reportedly wanting $25 million a year. Uh, the Jets basically came out with a press release immediately after him requesting the trade and said, not going to happen. Stan, the Jet fan, will be on later this week, possibly even tonight, to discuss this subject. So stay tuned for updates on that. Also, we're hearing reports that Brandon Ayuk has a deal on the table with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a team that we had heard was rumored for him to go to. Um, and it sound, it sounds like it's between him choosing to stay with the 49ers on an extension or choosing to get traded. Uh, ball, ball is in his court now based on what Ian Rappaport and Mike Garofolo are saying. And rookie quarterback J.J. McCarthy suffered a torn meniscus and he has to have surgery on his knee because of that. He, uh, it is unknown if he's out for the season. There's no timetable set for his return at this time. And rookie running back Tyrone Tracy Jr., who we talked about a little bit in the New York Giants Detroit Lions reaction video, uh, was carted off the field earlier today at practice with a leg injury. We don't know if it's serious. We just know that it was non-contact. Um, obviously there is that opening still filled, uh, still empty with Saquon Barkley leaving. And Eric Gray is a guy who we are looking at possibly filling in for Saquon Barkley. I did make a video about that, um, earlier last week. So you can go check that out if you're interested and rookie defensive tackle for the Cleveland Browns, Michael Hall jr. Was arrested earlier. Uh, today or late last evening, I suppose, um, for alleged domestic violence. Uh, he allegedly waved a gun at a woman and threatened her. He was the 54th overall pick this past NFL draft. So we will uh, keep an eye on that as well. Okay. Now that that's done, lots of, lots of stories happening. Yeah, yeah, I know. Not even the regular season yet. So, how, how are you? How are you doing, Chuss? Before we give me a breather, how's Chuss doing? How am I doing? Yeah, how's how's Chuss doing? I'm um, I'm all right, I guess. I mean, you know, I got min mincing right now, so I apologize if I sound a little uh, like stuttering or sounds like my mouth is full. But I'm a big mint fan. Uh, shout out Icebreakers. Okay. But um. But as for how I'm doing, life's all right. I just finished up a summer economics class, and now I wait for one of my last semesters coming up here in the fall. Uh, life's kind of stressful, a little busy right now, but you know, try to take some time to focus on football. And uh, Josh, I don't know if you saw, but uh, our buddy Connor, a uh, friend of the channel, uh, finally opened up the, uh, the – well, not he didn't open up the draft room, but he, uh, he did schedule our draft. It's going to be in 10 days. So I don't know if you saw that or not. I, I saw some changes had been made to the league. That must have been what was going on. So I, I'm welcome back again. I'm welcome to beat you again. Yeah. Well, considering you didn't beat me last year. Uh, and I, I think you, you actually won the league last year, didn't you? I, yeah. Not only did I win the league last year, but I also beat you both weeks that the Steelers beat the Bengals. And you know what? It, you know what? Okay, you're done. You're it done. just happened let's, to be a coincidence. It was kind of crazy. I so, mean, so. you know, I mean, I just it, I told you that like we would play Steelers versus Bengals and, and it would always be against you. That happened that week. And then I think 
the one when we played in November, I think I beat you by like not that many. But like I know that I beat you in the in the playoffs by a decent margin because George Pickens <laughs> popped off because of Mason Rudolph. So, but but I you know I'm gonna yeah this is a new year. I'm expecting to go like four and nine. Like I'm not expecting to do good. I mean I have a losing record in four years at that uh at that um in that league. So it's not like I'm that good. But a lot of people like you know my dad's been on the show. He's gonna be running it back with us as well um as well as connor who has also been on the show a couple of months ago almost a year ago probably now at this point dang time just gets away from me whenever you know life flies but yeah trust is doing all right trust is just very busy trust is very busy all right so first game we want to or i want to talk about i don't know i don't know if trust really cares but the uh cincinnati Bengals took on the tampa bay buccaneers and i, I i've already talked about muma uh Injig Meta. Someone said we should just call him Meta. I'm down with that. The undrafted free agent linebacker out of Wisconsin. Like, like Meta as in like the metaverse with like Facebook and stuff. Yeah, like I guess they're like, like that? Okay. Yeah, just call him Meta. So yeah. I, I, that, that's well, cool. I he, guess if he contacts us and says uh, he doesn't want to be, called, be that. called that, I'll respect <laughs> that. But right now, I'm just gonna call him Mumu or Meta. So you know who I'm talking about if I say that. Um, he looked great. Did a video on that going to do more follow-up on that once the nfl.com customer service lets me back into my all 22 film access the customer service for the nfl is very slow but let's let's talk about amarius mims so amarius mims is a guy out of georgia big athletic guy exciting player um we talked about him a little bit before the game, and he looked great. He looked great in game. I was really excited to see him, but now he's injured. He's heart. I'm I'm heartbroken. I'm not I'm not totally worried. I think he'll be okay, but uh, he does have a pec strain. But he, he looked really good. He and uh, um, I guess people are worried about the fact that one of the things people talked about ahead of him being drafted was an injury history at Georgia. And now he's already injured after one preseason game. Do you think this is something that Bengals fans should already be worried about? Should we already be freaking out? Cause after one, and mind you, he finished the game. He didn't know that he was injured until after press conferences and everything. I wouldn't be worried about it. I mean, the thing about Mims is he's he's a tough athlete. He's a tough guy. I mean, as you said, he finished the game and he didn't even know he was hurt. Um, you know, and this is coming from a Steelers fan. Like, I'm not I, – I, I genuinely don't think you guys should be worried. Um, I mean, obviously, it, it sucks that he does have a injury history. But uh, the nice thing about him is whenever he is healthy, he's a tank. And as long as he can stay healthy – or even in those games where like he does get hurt or he tweaks something or it's like a minor injury, he'll play through it. He'll finish the game, which shows a lot about his character, especially with somebody you wanted to draft in the first round. I mean, it was somebody the Steelers really wanted. Everybody was saying, "Oh, you want to get Amer- you want to try to get Mims on that team and be on the opposite side of uh, Broderick Jones? Like that'd be a stellar offensive line." Um, so you guys definitely have a good player in Mims. I also don't like I said, don't think you guys have to worry about anything. This is really early on it's the first week you even texted me saying that he was manhandling like two guys at once so obviously like he had a big workload that he he was trying to cover on top of that he also probably wanted to prove himself i mean he's that first round pick in cincinnati might have pushed himself a little bit too hard ended up getting himself hurt um but i don't think he's you know i, I don't think his injury has anything to be concerned about i mean obviously if it's a nagging injury and he continuously gets hurt, then you might want to chalk the the season up for him as a loss. Not saying the actual season, just saying him as a loss if he's still keeps tweaking the peck. But I'm hoping that it's just a couple of weeks. You know, he can rest up. Luckily, it's only preseason, and uh, you guys can you know get back into the fold. Hopefully, week one, if not week two. Yeah, I'm really hoping. And Zach Taylor said several weeks, and he wasn't real specific about what that means, but. I'm hoping that Trent Brown, who just returned to practice yesterday, is able to kind of come in, be that week one starter. I don't want to rush Mims back by any means because, like you said, you retweak something. And I get where fans are coming from, where they're worried, 
worried because, you know, Bengals have had bad O-line issues, haven't really had a franchise tackle really since Willie Anderson, at least at that right tackle position, which is a long time ago. It's been a minute. <laughs> Definitely so, been a minute for you guys. Um, and maybe, I guess Andrew Whitworth was there too. I can't remember um, if he was exclusively a tackle or not. I, I think he was, but – I mean, they've had good guys, but this is this is the first time in the Joe Burrow Joe, Joe Burrow era, definitely, that uh, they have had a fran a potential franchise tackle. So I understand why fans are kind of upset with uh, the possibility of him being injured so early. So, so with the Bengals, though, uh, do you uh, what, what do you think? Did you listen to the Malik right? Uh, Mike Seitz video yet? No, no, I didn't that? get around to it. I know what you're. I know what you're talking about. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not going to say anything about it. I haven't watched it personally. I just, <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> but I just know that uh, my buddy Mike Seitz is on there, and uh, shout out Mike Seitz for that. Uh, I just, just didn't know if you had watched it or if you, if you believe that uh, the window has closed at all for, so, for the Cincinnati Bengals. Is it, is it a window that's closing? Do you guys? Do you, do you think? What, what do you think? Because you know, I, I, I'm Sites is a very intelligent man, but obviously, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't hear either points, so I, I can't really say anything. Uh, he's, he's a big sports guy, but I think, you know, Cincinnati probably Cincinnati fans know Cincinnati better than, you know, Steelers fans or even any fan really. So um, I'm sure that, you know, you'd be eager to mention something. I would say from an objective perspective, I do believe that the window is still open. And I believe that there will always at least be a sliver of an open window as long as Joe Burrow is the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. That being said, I'm going I'm to talk about the negatives first before I talk about the pros. Two weak rooms that the Bengals have right now are defensive tackle and tight end. So tight end, a guy that I really want to do well is this guy, Tanner McLaughlin. We talked about him a little bit last week. Yeah. Um, he didn't have a ton of playing time in the first preseason game. He did have one reception for 23 yards. I believe he also had another large gain that was wiped off by a Jackson Carmen penalty, which shocking Jackson Carmen shouldn't be on the team. He is only still on the team by uh, the fact that there's injuries and stuff. I like, I'm pretty sure if Amarius Mims hadn't have gotten injured, Jackson Carmen would have been cut already, but that's where we're at. Tanner McLaughlin, um, I see him as being a potential future receiving tight end that can be strong. His run blocking wasn't where I want it to be. I believe he can perform better. He didn't take any pass blocking snaps. Um, they also drafted Eric all junior. I would like to see more depth at that tight end room. And then Tanner McLaughlin is really who I'm watching and will continue to watch to improve that room. And if that tight end room can get elevated, that window opens a little bit more other room that is worried worrisome defensive tackle second round pick chris jenkins out of michigan the mutant super exciting player like social media loves this guy however he is not a dj reader replacement dj reader went to the detroit lions in the offseason we don't know how he's going to perform he left with an injury who knows what will happen but mckinley jackson who was also drafted this season I believe is more of the DJ reader replacement than Chris Jenkins. They lined Chris Jenkins up in the a gap during the preseason and he got double teamed. And frankly, he got destroyed. He, he is branded as more of a run defender than a pass defender, but he is not an a block or an a gap run defender. In my opinion. Um, can he become that? Sure. Puts on some weight, but it, the a gap gets double teamed all the time. So you're you're going to get bulldozed if you don't have that weight, if you don't have that leverage. So I want to see, and again, McKinley Jackson could come in, late round pick, and be amazing. He could come in and be phenomenal and be instant starter, no problem. Line him up with B.J. Hill, we're good to go. But I want to see those two rooms get developed, and then that window opens more. The thing that I believe will keep the Bengals window the widest open is the fact that the Bengals can draft wide receivers like no other team. And 
we have seen this time and time again. The Bengals have always had great wide receivers. Chad Ochocinco, A.J. Green, T.J. Hashmanzada. Uh, now you've got Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and this guy. This pick was great. Jermaine Burton looked amazing. If you have not gone um, and seen Jermaine Burton's catches in this game, and he didn't get a ton of playing time, I don't think he's going to be a first-team guy uh, right away. I, I do still kind of subscribe to the idea of a rotating wide receiver three um, between Jermaine Burton and Andre Yoshivas. But Jermaine Burton had some fantastic catches in this game. From Logan Wood, Woodside, Joe Burrow wasn't even throwing to him. This was the third string quarterback throwing to him. He had some great deep catches. He had a touchdown. Super exciting. And I believe that the Bengals' constant ability to bring in talented wide receivers with Joe Burrow will help keep that Super Bowl window open, will help them remain competitive. Because even after T. Higgins leaves, which could easily happen this offseason, I still feel confident. Let let Chuss back into the show. <laughs> um, I that feel carried away there, haven't you? I I do still feel confident that Jermaine Burton can take over. That uh, Andre Yoshivas can take over those T Higgins snaps. I am not worried about that, and I think that is what will keep the Bengals window open. But it gets wider with that. Uh, tight end room getting better, that defensive tackle room getting better. All right. Yeah. I mean, I don't disagree. I, you know, I personally, I don't really have too much of an opinion on it. I'm not going to tell you if you're right or wrong. Obviously, I mean, I'm going to root against the Bengals, but also I'm not, like I said, I, I don't have them at the lowest part of my list right now. I still, I still have Cleveland probably at the lowest part of my list in the AFC North when it comes to rivalries. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, I was just really curious on what you had to say in regards to everything, just because I, I, like I said, my, my buddy Mike Seitz, you know, was a part of it. Is this, is this one of, uh, look at this. Or, is that, that not I mean, beautiful? I mean, it's a good catch. I mean, who threw it to him? Who, who was this that? This is Logan I, Woodside. Okay. So. Is that your, is that your backup now? Uh, no, he's the third string. Okay. I screen grabbed it real quick. Good throw. He, he hesitates a little bit. It was it was a nice overall play. And the flag uh that was for illegal contact, so it stayed. The touchdown counted. It was beautiful. So that's yeah. Jermaine Burton. Cool. Yeah. If, nice. if, if you're on if you're on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, Google Jermaine Burton highlights right now. Leave this show. Google Jermaine Burton highlights. Watch the video and then come back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's impressive. I mean, I, I mean, you're not wrong. I mean, I feel like, I mean, arguably I think the Bengals and the Steelers both have had a long history of drafting pretty solid wide receivers. I mean, we've kind of gone down a list here. I mean, I think out of the last, you know, a couple of years, I think Juju was probably, you know, maybe arguably are not as good compared to like a Pickens or an Antonio Brown. But I mean, even then I feel like Juju really was a big key factor in the lat in those, couple of years where AB left and whatnot, and we still did relatively well. I, I feel like uh, the AFC North is just decent when it comes to drafting receivers to, for the most part. I feel like, I feel like all, us too. I feel like our teams right. do. I don't know. I, I can't, I don't know about, I, I don't know if I can say the same about Baltimore uh, right now or, or Cleveland to be completely honest. I mean, I mean, I mean, they, they had Terrell Pryor as their wide receiver one for a while. And he was initially quarterback when he got drafted in the, in the NFL. So, I mean, you look at a kind of some interesting concepts in the AFC North, but no, I agree. I just, I was just curious because as mentioned, uh, you followed uh, Malik, Wright. I, I followed Mike sites and Mike sites, you know, I, I literally saw on Sunday. So and he was popping up on my Twitter on top of talking about the pirates game. But, um, but yeah, just curious to see what your opinion was coming from diehard Bengals fan, Joshua over here. So, that's that's my opinion. I think as long as Joe Burrow is the quarterback in Cincinnati, um, we will see this window reopen or think, open, and, and I think we will see uh, it get elevated here in the next few seasons as well. What I was gonna say, do you think it, you have a better shot with T or with like the new guys coming in? Like, do you think that you're better off winning with Jamar T and like a Yoshi Voss Burton type style, or do you think that like Burton would be 
it's going to be Burton, Yoshivas, and then like Trenton Irwin kind of like on the, on the outside looking in with a wide receiver four. like, do you, are you more confident in the future than present? I guess I'd say I'm more confident in the present because I know what T Higgins is right now, but also because right now all of those guys are on the team. Like okay. this, this season we have T Higgins and Burton and Yoshi and Charlie Jones. If you want to throw them in there and Trent Irwin. next season, it might just be uh Jamar chase and Burton and Yoshi who, who knows if, uh, Irwin resigns. I think he's only on a one-year deal. Mm. So uh, I could be wrong about that. But even even still, um, I think this year, I think your current year is always your best year when you're built like the Bengals are um, and you're not in a clear rebuild. And the Bengals obviously aren't in a rebuild. But uh, let's let's move on. There's, there's a team that you like called the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mm. And – there, there's actually debate online about whether you guys are in a rebuild. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's interesting right now. I can tell because, you because, And really, I think this debate stemmed with the Brandon Ayuk <laughs> rumors because the argument essentially goes, it makes no sense to trade for Brandon Ayuk unless you believe you're in a Super Bowl window right now. However... The Steelers have an old defense. Like a lot of their defensive stars are older players with TJ Watt, Mm -hmm. Cam Hayward, stuff, those guys. There are some young stars on the team. Also, is your quarterback situation good enough to where you believe you could win a Super Bowl? So, like, what are your thoughts then on the Steelers Super Bowl window? Uh, I mean, the thing is, is I think right now Omar Khan is really, I mean, obviously Omar Khan is like one of the most aggressive GMs probably in in the NFL. I mean, you could probably debate that, but I I genuinely think over the last couple of years, I've seen the aggressiveness in Omar Khan. Uh, Clearly he, he wants to win and he's, he's big buyer in the team. And I think the reason that they're trying to get Brandon Ayuk is I don't know if it's necessarily him focusing entirely on the offense, but I think the idea that he wants the defense full of like your Minka Fitzpatrick's, your Cam Hayward's, your TJ Watt, like that, that Mm -hmm. Watt brother to get that ring, because obviously when Watt's healthy and you have all those defensive starters healthy, the team is just completely reliant on the defense. And although the games kind of suck and the offense doesn't move in the right direction, you genuinely have seen like the Steelers win these like 16, 10 games with Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, like these ridiculous games, but the defense is holding on. And I think Omar Khan's idea is that if he can get like, even like a, an average quarterback, because uh, listen, I'm a big Kenny Pickett fan, but uh, looking, looking at it from this perspective now, he he's in a, he's not as good of a quarterback as everyone thought. He's definitely below average in comparison to even fields, who didn't have the best preseason showing. Now you, we can argue that that could have been the O-line. That also could have been just, you know, new new territory, new new feel. But I don't think he's that bad. I think I think he definitely will have a little bit more time to shine. But um, when it comes to the Steelers' uh, Super Bowl window, I, I think that it's – it's, it's not as wide open as I would say like a Bengals. I feel like it's shrinking more and more because eventually, I, I don't know off the top of my head how old Watt is, but I know that we drafted Watt in 2017. So he's obviously been in the league for seven years. So obviously it's, it's taken a toll and you kind of have to assume that Cam Hayward's going to be on his way out. He's not performing the same as he once was. He's out for a little bit longer when it comes to injuries. And I think Omar Khan is hoping that with you know the right tools, whether it's Russell Wilson and and or Justin Fields and maybe Brandon Ayuk and George Pickens in a solid run game with Warren and Najee that you could maybe sneak in a 10 and seven, you know, six or seven seeded run and just go through and win the Super Bowl like you did in 05. And I mean, it's possible. It's not impossible that it'll happen. Uh, right now, I feel like I need to see a little bit more. I mean, maybe with adding Brandon Ayuk, it, it could change the whole, you know, perspective on what I'm thinking, because obviously I haven't seen Russell Wilson play for the Steelers and Arthur Smith's offense yet, because obviously he has gotten hurt and he, they said that he was not going to play week one. All we saw was fields who honestly, I mean, didn't play as many uh, snaps as, uh, as Kyle Allen, but Kyle Allen looked really good for a QB three when he went like 17 of 24 touchdown interception, pretty sure fields 
also threw a touchdown that got called back because it was like out of bounds. But yeah, I mean, this guy looked really good. I mean, the other Allen from Buffalo, I mean, he looked relatively decent considering, um, you know, I mean, we, we had Justin Fields and all this hype around him, but Fields got sacked twice, but he, he looked really good. I mean, he really did just looking back on it. But um, I think in comparison to you guys, I think, you know, I think our window is shrinking and I think that's kind of why Omar Khan seems to be kind of like buying in a way, because I feel like, you know, like if you think about it, like the LA uh, Rams had a lot of the pieces and they just started buying players and like big trades and doing all these things. And they won that one Super Bowl, and then it just became a tank rebuild. Now I don't think Omar Khan wants to do that because he likes to build up from the draft. And, you know, we've been seeing that with like the picks that he's been doing. He's not as, you know, he's not real keen on giving away picks and stuff. Omar Khan is a very intelligent guy, but I, I do think, in my perspective, the window is shrinking, especially since Watt and Minka and Cam are getting older. And if you don't have a sustainable offense now and you're relying completely on your defense, in like two or three years, you're not going to have those defensive players that you're really relying on. And eventually you're just going to have nothing and you're going to have that losing season. And I mean, at that point, you don't know if Mike Tom is going to retire because I mean, he's been in the league. I mean, it, it's got to be like 20, he's been the head coach for the Steelers at least 20, 20 years or probably right. 20, no, probably whoa, 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 no, 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 no. not 20. Oh. He's, he's been, he's not, not, he, he came in in like, Oh, seven, Oh eight. So it's definitely been 10, 15 plus years, but. Oh, uh, if he may, Oh no. If he makes it to the end of his contract, it'll be 21 years. 21 years so he's been he's been our head coach we'll just say 15 plus ish and he he's been he's been around for a while and i mean you just don't know how long he's gonna go before he decides to retire i mean it's inevitable i mean there's people like andy reed that are still kicking it at their ages but then there's other guys like bill belichick who eventually they part ways and then you just kind of accept that time or or things happen i mean like uh, even from a Steelers perspective, uh, perspective, Bill Cowher, like he, he could have been around so much longer, but uh, he took the time to step away because his wife was sick. And I mean, he could have been in the legal, I mean, things happen. The world, like the world just keeps going and whether you can, you know, stick around or things out of your control happen. I mean, it happens. So we don't really know what the future holds. So in my opinion, to answer your question, I think the window is smaller than it was five years ago, probably, or seven years ago, even. I, I think I think our big window probably could have been that A.B. Brown Bell era. I think that was our – even though we didn't have the defense, I feel like the offense was enough to get us to win games. But now the defense, it's – every game is a nail-biter, <laughs> and it's just mm. it's just tough. So I, I don't know. Maybe it'll be a different season this year. I'm hopeful. Uh, All Sports News has us at 8-9, and nine, which is just incorrect because they have to know at this point we're going to go 9-8. and eight. But, I mean, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah. that's what I think. I mean, the Steelers, I, I don't think the defense – somehow I don't think the defense gets enough credit for being the reason the Steelers have that streak of winning records. Yeah. I, I mean, I looked it up while you were talking. TJ Watts, 29. Cam Hayward's 35. Yeah, so Cam's, Cam's almost done, man. It, I mean, I'll be surprised if he plays next year, genuinely. It, it is impressive what the Steelers have built on a defense – um, and I mean, I don't like the Steelers, but I have to respect them as a football fan, what, what they've built And this team, I think would be a lot more respected as a total defense. If the offenses that they'd been given to work with were better and people would be paying closer attention to them, because when you're constantly getting a nine and eight record or an eight and eight record before there were 17 games, it's it's like oh that team wasn't that good and it's like actually the defense was really good but you, they were the offense was running jet sweeps the entire time so I I do like what the Steelers have built with their defense um, there was a player you were excited about and I thought he looked really good in his preseason game you're gonna do a, a deeper video into that I liked him ahead of the draft and now I have to not like him Steeler but uh, do you want to talk about little little tease maybe a little bit about what you liked about this guy yeah i mean wilson is unreal i mean peyton wilson i just genuinely thought that he was just an all-around solid player in that preseason game i mean he was all over the field everyone at least in pittsburgh on twitter and whatnot or x uh, were really talking about it and or really talking about this guy and how well he performed and i, I genuinely believe that um 
dude is really good coming out of NC State. I mean, obviously some injuries had plagued him and probably he could have been drafted a lot higher than than where he was drafted. But um, I think this guy is somebody that you that Steelers fans should genuinely watch for. And I'm going to make a video about it to talk about his career with NC State and, you know, being in the ACC and stuff and, um, you know, what he possibly could bring to the table for the Steelers. I'm not really an NC State fan, but I do follow the ACC. So I'm going to hopefully do some more research, some more film and some more studying on this guy. But I'm very excited about him. I'm actually more excited about him. Sorry, my printer just reset itself. So if you heard that, but um, <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely uh, more mo most excited for him out of even our top two lineman picks. I, I think he is probably the most excited player I am like that. I have excitement for out of the Steelers rookie lineup, but that's just me. But yeah, I'm going to make a video about him coming up. Probably hopefully in the next couple of days, goal would probably hopefully be by the second preseason game. But obviously, as I have mentioned, uh, life can be kind of busy for me. Uh, I have a, I have a little, I don't even know where it's at right now. Oh, right over here. I have this little planner. So it kind of gives me a better idea of different things because I have work on Saturday. I have things in photography throughout the week and whatnot. So life gets kind of busy. But um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to try to shoot to make a video. I'm very excited about Peyton Wilson, though, at the end of the day. So not, not that I'm not like, like, I know a lot of people are talking about Roman Wilson, uh, McCormick. Uh, I just, I, I want to stick with Peyton Wilson. Yeah. I mean, honestly, and what, honestly, I, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I fell asleep during the Steelers preseason game because I got my wisdom teeth that. Out that disrespectful, same day. man. You got to stay my, up. My mom, was, I, I rewatched it later on, but like I didn't get to a lot of the stuff I'd already known because I looked at it. But my mom was like, I tried to wake you up, but you were gone. And <laughs> but what I what I do remember was and what I what I confirmed later on was Peyton Wilson was all over the field. He looked great. He had great sideline to sideline speed. Um Troy Feutanu kind of got screwed in my opinion. He his first NFL snaps were against Daniil Hunter, which Daniil Hunter is just an underrated pass rusher. Now with the Houston Texans, was with Minnesota for years. And then Mason McCormick just didn't look great from what I wanted him to look um, or expected him to look. So we'll see what happens. It was the first, first game. But I do think Peyton Wilson was definitely the highlight of the rookies, and I'm excited to uh, see your video, see what you discover about this guy. What, what can Steelers fans grasp onto and what – what can uh, Bengals fans look for when uh, we inevitably go to Pittsburgh to defeat you guys once again? But when when do you when do you guys come to town? I, I don't know off the top of my I, head. I don't know off the top of my. I have I have a uh, chart somewhere, but I don't have the it with me. Bengals old... play the January fifth, twenty twenty five. That game, it could be either meaningful or meaningless. So I guess we'll find out come next yeah, year. Yeah, you know what? You guys might actually win that because we'll probably set our starters after. And then we'll go game. nine and eight and make the playoffs as the wild card is, <laughs> and then lose to Kansas City or whoever we play or, or whoever the two seed's going to be at that point. I mean, that's just been the, the rotation. I mean, unless, like I said, unless, unless something different happens this year. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. But, I mean, we did lose to a Houston preseason team. Um, I mean, the, the Texans are just a really good team. I mean, they're a very deep team. I mean, even last year when they had Tank Dell hurt, I mean, their wide receivers still stepped up and freaking they went to the divisional round. So, I mean, like, I think that, I think the Houston Texans are also a team that, you know, I think, I think the South is just some, uh, is just somewhere to look for this year. I, th I think they're just going to be a good division, but that's just me. I, I, I think the South, and we're going to talk about the Colts game here in a minute. So this is a great transition, but mm -hmm. the South is in my opinion, the most improved um, of all of the divisions. I still think the North is the best. The AFC North is the best division, but the AFC South, uh, the Titans brought in a ton of free agents. I know Brian Callahan has a plan down there as the new head coach. Mm -hmm. And then the Jaguars, I expect them to bounce back. They had kind of a weird season. Trevor Lawrence was hurt all year. They, they have a bounce back opportunity here. Um, Texans, fantastic. And then I think the Colts, I'm really excited for that Colts offense, which is a thing we're going to talk about here in a second. Yep. Uh, just Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor. They have so many guys, uh, A.D. Mitchell, that you're just going to 
see so many versatile and dynamic plays coming from that team, I'm sure. Before we move on to the Colts, though, I did want to give an update to a story that we mentioned at the top of the show, and that is Tyrone Tracy Jr.'s leg injury is not as bad as it looked, according okay. to Jordan Rainin and uh, Sports Center. He was put into an air cast and taken off on a cart. However, he is already back in meetings, which is great for the young rookie out of Purdue. So, uh, Giants fans, you can breathe a sign of sigh of relief. I don't know how big of a part of that Giants offense he is going to be, but hey, you know he's an option. He can still fight for that Saquon Barkley spot. Let's move on to the Colts. Now, when we talked about the Colts last week, you kind of surprised me, and you said the person I'm going to be watching, who I'm excited to see, even if he was taken too high. Is Bo Nix. Yeah, I told you. I'm big Bo Nix. And fan. you know what? Bo Nix looked great. Uh, let me pull up his stats here um, from that game. But, like, I was watching him, and he's he's athletic. He's not – I think he's going to end up being a pocket passer. I think um, he can move. He can move around if he needs to. Uh, but he, he, he was fun to watch. I enjoyed watching Bo Nix play. I think there was a little bit of a over exaggeration from the announcers when they were saying no, he's the next yeah. Drew Brees. Okay, well, yeah, but, they need to chill out here. I mean, it's preseason game one, but, but yeah. yeah, on 21 attempts, he completed 15, 70. That's a 71.4 percent completion percentage, 125 passing yards, and one touchdown. Uh, the Bengals' first round pick, or not the Bengals? The Colts, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. I, the Colts first round pick, Leatu Latu came out and he said, I really wanted to tackle him, but I just couldn't catch him. Like that's <laughs> elusive. And uh, Leatu Latu is someone who I'm excited about. I think the Colts uh, got a great pass rusher out of him, out of the UCLA stud. And even he was like that, that guy was fast. He he was hard to catch. So Bo Nix was exciting. He might have won himself the starting spot if he continues. To play like that. Uh, they have Jarrett Stidham over there still. Um, he took the first team snaps, and then Bo Nix came in at the end of the first half and started the second half. So did you happen to catch any of your boy uh, Bo Nix's game? Um, I saw a little bit. I mean, I definitely see where the comparison comes from, like with the Drew Brees and how he plays in his playing style. I don't think he's the next coming of Drew Brees. I feel like a lot of people need to – you know, chill out a little bit. Nothing, nothing's happened yet. It's the first preseason game. You know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of time before, I mean, the Broncos have to play the Packers and the Cardinals in preseason. And then from there, we'll see who gets the starting job did. I mean, this is just a random throw in question. I, I, I didn't really catch too much of that game. Did Zach Wilson ever go in? Is Zach Wilson even rostered anymore? Like it, I know he was what the Broncos at one point, that but Zach then, Wilson is rostered. He was traded there this off season. So like a yeah. sixth round pick. I don't think. Oh, he did play. Yeah, yeah. he had. He had um, decent game actually. Uh, 117 passing yards, 10 completions on 13 attempts, 69.9 percent completion percentage, no touchdowns though. Okay. I mean, but that's still not bad. I was just curious because obviously, I mean, they kind of low key have a quarterback competition over in Denver. I mean, you have, you have Stidham and you have Wilson and Bo Nix. You expect Nix to play, but if they pull with Steelers and they want Bo Nix to sit a little bit, you know, he might be behind Stidham or uh, Wilson. But I mean, I've been reading reports that said that they should trade Stidham, leave it as Wilson and Nix, which would be kind of interesting. But I mean, it, I guess it's, what reporters and beat writers think, but, but I mean, we know what Zach Wilson is and Jared Stidham has been in the league since I believe 2019, but he hasn't really had a chance to, you know, be a starter. No, nah. uh, long term. Nah. Zach Wilson somehow kept getting back into the starter position for the New York jets, whether it be injuries or just, you know, their constant rotation of quarterbacks, Zach Wilson, we have seen Zach Wilson. We know, what Zach Wilson is. Um, I, I even in what Zach Wilson is, is he will come out, look amazing for one game randomly, and then just tank like the next four. Mm -hmm. And so if I, 
if I am Sean Payton, barring Jarrett Stidham and Bo Nix just completely like, you know, wetting the bed, being awful, I don't know how you can honestly look at all three of these guys and be like, you know what? Quarterback competition. Zach Wilson won. We're putting him in. We're naming oh, him the starter. Especially no, yeah. after you blew up the 2024 NFL draft by drafting Bo Nix in the first place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean that, that I mean that that was really I still think that is so funny to me. I mean, you watching and the Falcons are really the ones who kind of started that, but watching all those teams freak out. Oh yeah, it was like awesome. One after it, the it, other, it was so funny. I and I, then the Raiders like desperately just trying to trade up and then not getting a quarterback when they were the team that was expected to take a quarterback. Um, I just yeah, I, I think you have to give Bo Nix a chance, and I think as long as he is somewhat in the same realm of statistics and looks as good as Zach Wilson in the preseason, I mean, I mean. We're, we're talking about these two. Zach Wilson was drafted in 2022, has been a starter. Again, we know what he is. Bo Nix is a rookie. That was his NFL debut, and he put up similar, if not better, stats than Zach Wilson. Mm-hmm. And I think, past the eye test, I think he looked better overall. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, that's what a lot of people were saying. I mean, like I said, I only caught a couple of uh, – I don't remember where I – like what I caught exactly. I want to say it was like, you know – only a part of his game, but I, I caught a couple of his highlights and whatnot. And he looks good. I can, like I said, I see the comparison. Um, that's why I was very excited for him. I mean, I drafted, I'd said, I like in a fantasy perspective, I drafted him in um, in a dynasty league. He was my first round draft pick. I kind of glad that I did get him because I mean, just, I mean, like you said, I mean, there's, there's some injuries and there's some other things and some of these quarterbacks aren't really impressing me yet. So, I mean, just kind of exciting to see some like a quarterback actually like look relatively good and it ends up being Bo Nix when everybody is hyping up Caleb Williams and you know all of these other quarterbacks and nothing's really Which, Caleb Caleb Williams looked good though like I, I mean, mean I'm not saying that he probably didn't I'm, I didn't catch the Bears stats or highlights but I mean everybody's talking about Caleb and it's just like everybody talks about Caleb Williams and I know Jaden Daniels looked pretty good um, but like I, they're talking about these guys that like people like Bo Nix are getting kind of nixed. Yeah, um, he was, so, he was a fun watch. Yeah. No, so same, same. I, I, I think you guys, I think people need to keep an eye out. I think I genuinely think this is going to be, this is a really good quarterback class. Like I, I, it is a very, very enjoyable. Not that last year's wasn't, um, last year's has a lot of potential other than Stroud. Uh, like Stroud oh. is, I'm, well, Stroud, Stroud is way, Proven. yeah, Str- yeah. Stroud, Stroud is head above shoulders above like Bryce Young, but I mean, you know, we'll see what happens. So the, but. I saw, I want to say it was Brett Coleman who tweeted it, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But he said, whoever tweeted it said that the 2022 quarterback class was the blood sacrifice for the 2024 quarterback class because a lot of these guys already look good. Joe Milton even. New England Patriots looked good. Yeah, yeah. Drake May looked decent. Uh, Bo Nix is looking good. Uh, Michael Penix Jr. wasn't amazing. And I, a lot of these guys are going to get screwed by the fact that they were drafted in a place that they probably shouldn't have been. Yeah, a lot of hype. So, a lot of hype. So now we have to now we have to judge them based on that. Mm-hmm. I have to I have to say okay. Um, was this guy worth the fourth overall pick or the fifth overall pick or wherever they <laughs> fell? Probably not, but he, I'm not, we have to make sure we're not holding that against him. Whereas Joe Milton, I can be like, he was, he was later on. I can give him some room to work because not as much as expected of him, but um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Now I want to flip to the other side of the ball. We've talked about the Denver Broncos. We don't even cover them on this show. Yeah, but, but shout out Denver. Shout, shout out Denver. I want to talk about some guys, some Indianapolis Colts. Okay. And uh two two guys who I think will make the 53 man roster and maybe maybe shock some people. And that I think Colts fans should be paying attention to. Do you so, think Latu is gonna make the roster? Yes, I do think Latu is gonna make the roster. I do I think, think the Colts first overall or the yeah, the Colts first round pick will make the roster. Epic. But, I continue. 
I'm going to talk about their fifth round pick first, and that is Anthony Gould, who uh, I have mentioned multiple times. And I, I, I just this is the guy who I just feel a tugging on my heart for him that I, I think he's going to be special. And uh, he was drafted primarily as a punt returner, kick returner in the fifth round, uh, Oregon State. Um, not necessarily your most your flashiest draft pick. Uh, he is technically a wide receiver, and I thought I thought this was a great move by the Indianapolis Colts because we have the dynamic kickoff this year, which is supposed to improve kick returns, and they are already getting ahead on that. They're they're specializing in that. However, I also pointed out you have. Now, on the Indianapolis Colts, you have Michael Pittman Jr., obviously, Josh Downs, Alec Pierce, A.D. Mitchell, and Anthony Gould. Okay. Alec Pierce, he's a pure deep threat. Like, he's not great, but he can catch the ball deep. He can be a weapon. Michael Pittman Jr., amazing. We know. A.D. Mitchell can be a deep threat. He can go across the middle uh, out of the slot as well. And Anthony Gould... I said is going to end up being Josh Downs backup. And I was holding on to that. I think, I think they're similar players. I think they can be used in similar ways. And what do you know? Josh Downs gets a leg ankle injury in the, in training camp. And my, we don't know if he's going to be ready for the regular season. Guess who was out there for first team snaps. You might not, not might not have noticed him, but I noticed him. He didn't catch the ball. He didn't get targeted. But I noticed him out there. The Indianapolis Colts are planning on using Anthony Gould as Josh Downs' backup if he is not ready for the regular season. So, Colts fans, I am telling you, pay attention to this guy, especially as we get closer to the regular season because he's not only going to be a special teams unit, he is going to be utilized as Josh Downs, who had a fantastic rookie season as his backup. And he might even get used as A.D. Mitchell's backup if something happens. I don't think he could quite back up uh, Michael Pittman Jr. I think you need a different type of player for that. But I'm just saying, watch him in the preseason because that's going to kind of prepare you for what you might see week one if Josh Downs isn't ready. The other guy, I and this is a guy who the only reason I've been paying attention to him uh, to start off was because he's from the same hometown as me. And that is Craig Young from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now, Craig Young went to Wayne High School, which, um, to be honest, just isn't – they're not known for having a great uh, football program, uh, not a lot of winning records. But Craig Young was a standout. He was a standout linebacker when he was in high school, went to Ohio State, finished up at Kansas – and now he is fighting for a spot on the 53-man roster for the Indianapolis Colts. And he he looked great. He had four solo tackles and one assist. Uh, his overall grade was a 73.4. And we're talking as a rookie, undrafted, first debut. He had, I believe, the second or third most tackles of any defensive player on the field in that game. And his coverage grade was a 79.2, which I, I pointed this out. For the Moo Moo Meta video. A lot of preseason stuff is man coverage. You don't see a lot of zone. You see zone sometimes, but a lot of it is man coverage. Craig Young has the potential, I believe, to make this 53-man roster um, on a team that doesn't have a ton of linebacker depth. Uh, They have Zaire Franklin and EJ Speed. And after that, it's kind of up in the air, in my opinion. I mean... Jalen Carlisle, okay, but I mean, a lot of these guys, I could easily see Craig Young making it into the second string, maybe even fighting for a third uh, third spot starter on those rotational sets uh, with Seagun Alubi. I don't think he's quite that same type of player, but um, definitely could see him being a backup to EJ Speed uh, eventually. So, We'll see what happens with Craig Young, but I'm saying Indianapolis Colts fans, uh, that's two players on two different sides of the ball you should be paying attention to because those are guys that I believe can make the 53-man roster that aren't necessarily being talked about right now. And something we're trying to do is point out these guys ahead of time so that when you're with your buddies at the bar or watching the game over at their house, 
you can be like, oh, yeah, Craig Young. He came in as a practice squad player out of Fort Wayne, Indiana, and now he's uh, getting snaps. He had the third most tackles of any player last week against the Broncos. So um, keep an eye on him. Number 49, Indianapolis Colts linebacker. Uh, I don't know, it, it, Chuss, if you have anything to follow up on that. Uh, I would say probably not just because uh, – and admire the voice crack as it happened. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't follow Colts football as much as you do. I, I don't, we don't always get the Colts games either just because we're not always in the range for some reason. We don't always get Colts games. So, um, I did not catch the Colts game, but I know that as you've mentioned, there are some players that you want to watch out for. And, as I've said only like 15 minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, I'm very high on their division, which includes the Colts. I think they're a very improved team. I mean, the fact that they almost made playoffs with Gardner Minshew and it wasn't even Anthony Richardson uh, says a lot about their team. I mean, they definitely, I mean, Gardner Minshew, not that he's a bad quarterback, but I mean, he started for Jacksonville many moons ago in 2019 or however long ago it was. And he went like one in 15 or two and it wasn't a good, wasn't that good of a record. And then he, went in as backups for the Eagles and stuff. And it just, he didn't look too hot. And then for him to go and be pretty decent for the Colts really shows where the Colts are at. Um, you know, sometimes you can say, Oh, well, Minshew is not a good quarterback. Well, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think the Colts are just a really good team. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on them. Nobody's talking about them because everyone's talking about Houston and the fact that Jacksonville was still in the talks, even a little bit last year, but that, te- that, 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 uh, that division is going to be really good kind of interesting to see who comes out of the AFC North this or not AFC North AFC as a whole this year yeah I mean I think people forget like the Colts weren't far off from making the playoffs either they like, won game it was literally a Houston it was one Colts play and, yeah oh yeah the one play that one final play that uh, I forget his name that backup running back right? and it wasn't ball. a great ball by Gardner Minshew but that that it was, ball it was, that's I don't even know if he – I don't remember the play off the top of my head, but I remember people were saying, I don't even know why they would throw it. I don't even know why he was orchestrated into that because he it, he would have been, like, hit. Like, he would have right. probably been short anyway. So it was like, why would yeah. you run that play with him as the – with the, your backup running back or your third right. string or whatever he was? Right. It wasn't, it wasn't a great play, but the Colts could have easily been the Houston Texans last season with the playoffs – they could have been the team to go into the playoffs. That game was win and in. Mm-hmm. Whoever won that game was going in. So don't shortchange the Colts, especially if Anthony Richardson stays healthy this off or this season. Uh, now you've got Jonathan Taylor also healthy and not going through contract drama. Michael Pittman Jr. just got extended. Um, we mentioned all the other guys that they have. I think the Colts could be a sneaky team that people are underrating. Yeah. So um Definitely, definitely exciting. And I'm going to keep checking on the news here, make sure nothing is going down with Brandon Ayuk. See, what usually happens is I'll hit end record and then it'll be announced that he was traded. Yeah, but I, I feel like, um, I don't know. I just feel like it's it's just a random Tuesday. Um, I, I, don't, I don't think that, I don't think today is going to be the day. I mean, Ayuk is trending, but it does not seem like, I I, yeah, I don't think anybody has really, have finally met the trade demands previously. Then so what's the holdup? Niners are insisting and want Ayuk to accept their contract extension terms. He still has it. Uh, at, at, at this point, it's like what? It, like there's really nothing. I'm glad that Ian Rapper report uh, finally reported about it because before it was just kind of these Steelers guys and these insiders and that everybody claimed that they didn't know anything, but apparently they did kind of know something. So um, now it's just kind of a waiting game to see what actually happens. I mean, if it's not, I, it, a part of me believes that the trade's not going to go through until next week. I think it's going to be after preseason week two. I, I genuinely think it's going to be closer to week three. I you going to play with all the starters. Everyone's going to be like, oh my goodness. And they're going to, everyone's going to lose their minds whenever the Steelers play at Detroit. And then we're going to go into week one or whatever. So but that's just my prediction. I, I just, I don't think the deal is going to get done this week. I think, they're just gonna have to, you know, get moving with Ayuk or 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 uh, 
maybe if if the Cowboys don't re-sign C.D. Lamb, we can just bag the Ayuk situation completely and sign C.D. Lamb next year. I think that could be a good idea too. I'm sure you'd think that's a great idea. Yeah, I think that would be a better idea. Bag Ayuk at that point. Um, I don't know. Dallas is kind of interesting though on that spectrum too. I don't know. Are you going to keep Dak Prescott around? Are you going to you going to keep CD around? Is that team going to be rebuilding? Is their window shrinking even more? I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot a lot of questions over in, in Dallas too that we could talk about as well. But oh boy. Okay. Well, we're we're almost out of time here. Um, I, I think those are Chuss's final final thoughts. Oh, we okay. We have a final update on Tyrone Tracy Jr. All right. From Ian Rappaport, he said, Giants rookie running back Tyrone Tracy Jr., who is primed to get significant playing time in the backfield, was carted off the field on Tuesday and was diagnosed with a low ankle sprain, sources say, much better than anticipated. So that sucks for him, but that's good news from what we thought it could have been. Those, those non-contact leg injuries usually aren't, aren't that great. They usually mean your season's over. So low ankle sprain, that's that's good. Um, he'll be week to week. Not a long-term injury, though. Yeah, he, so. he should be back. I mean, luckily, like, like we've said before, week one preseason, you're going into week two. If it's week by week and you miss even like four weeks, you're only really missing like one full week of the NFL schedule, if not two. So, I mean, you're really not missing too much. So, I, I think that's a really good – really – well, not, not – no injury is a really good injury, but it's it's a good injury from what it could have been. Right, so, right. As you mentioned. And that's that's what uh, fans need to remember. So, I'm um, glad Tyrone Tracy Jr. is all right. I'm going to go into my little spiel if you have nothing else to say. No, I was just going to say, are you excited for uh, – uh, are you excited to go into Chicago and play Caleb Williams this Saturday? You know, we didn't talk about any of the upcoming games. No, I was just curious. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but I was just curious if you if you were excited. I again. Just... We have a lot to talk about. I mean, we don't have to talk about it. We can wait till next week. It's a lot of news, a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of spiels and stuff. I mean, are you excited uh, for Chicago? I mean, okay, so yeah, real quick. I mean, I, I am excited. Um, I want to see if the defensive tackle room can do better. I want to see if the tight ends can do better. I'm excited to see more of Jermaine Burton I believe, and uh, Matt Lee. Matt Lee is another guy who we'll probably end up talking about next week. I want to see him taking first-team snaps. I think he can be better than Trey Hill at the center position. Um, he was a seventh-round pick, so that's an exciting uh, possibility that we could see in the Chicago Bears game. I can't believe I. It, it doesn't it's it's not that deep it's not like it's it is, not like this it is, is so deep it, this is the this isn't the this is the preseason i mean at the end of the day these games don't really matter i mean they matter for our players and to see who we're expecting to have starting and who's going to make the 53 man roster but at the end of the day it's not like oh uh, we lost to houston our playoff dreams are <laughs> shot i mean it definitely doesn't look too promising i mean with, I mean, we play the Buffalo Bills on Saturday. I mean, last time we played the Bills uh, in preseason last year, we won. I won. I won like sixty bucks. Super exciting day. Um, so hopefully, I I bet again. Maybe the Steelers will win. I don't know, but yeah, I'm excited for that game too. Okay, so top three things I'm looking for for the Bengals versus the Bears: defensive tackle improvement, Matt Lee to take snaps over Trey Hill at center. Tight end. I want to see Tanner McLaughlin do better. That, that's what I'm going to be looking at. Trust. Do you have anything you are looking for? Uh, I am. I yeah. I am going to be looking at the the line for the Steelers because um, definitely want to keep an eye on the line because I thought at points last week they weren't too hot from what I've heard and from what I've seen. I uh, definitely want to see improvement on that. Also want to see more of Justin Fields considering he really didn't play that much, also got sacked twice. And a lot of people were saying that it was the offensive line's fault, not Justin Fields' fault for a lot of the sacks and the different issues. So I think those two those two go hand-in-hand hand with each other. And then I kind of, for uh, my third, I'm looking for the Wilsons. 
And by Wilson's, I mean all three Wilson's. I don't know if Russell's going to play, but it'd be really cool to see him do some reps if he's healthy. Same thing with Roman Wilson. It'd be really cool to see him play, but he's also been hurt. So if he gets to play, I'd be loving to watch him play and see what we should expect from him. And lastly, obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, super huge on Peyton Wilson. So I'll be very excited to see what he does week two against the Bills and how they orchestrate him into the offense. So... Um, yeah, I think those are the three I'm looking for. So multiple players, but you know, those are my three. All right. Well, if you ever wanted proof that the show is not scripted at all, that there you have it. Um, I completely forgot about that whole segment of the show and we will talk about more of those players next week. I may preview Matt Lee a little bit in a video upcoming trust has that Peyton Wilson video upcoming as well. So stay tuned for that. But Thank you for listening to today's show. If you enjoyed, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. We can be found anywhere, literally anywhere. I like if someone tells me that they they tried to find us somewhere and we we aren't there, I go upload us to there so that we are there. So anywhere that I am aware of existing, we can be found there. So check us out. Anywhere you listen to podcasts and on YouTube at No Butts Show. Our social media pages are No Butts underscore show on Instagram and No Butts Show on TikTok. My Twitter is Josh underscore Butts underscore 2001. And if you would like to reach us, you can email us at Bull Moose Podcast 2. That's the number two at gmail.com. Finally, our spread shop will be in the description. So check out the merch. Once again, if you enjoyed today's show, like, comment, and subscribe. We have had a crazy amount of subscribers come in lately. We've got like 40 from one video, which is awesome. And I appreciate every single one of you. But uh, if we could hit 500 by week one of the regular season, that would be amazing. I don't even know if that's mathematically possible, but let's do the impossible and hit that number anyway. Until next time, I'm Josh Butts for Chuss. Go do something nice for someone.